This is section 12.6. We will not be doing the problems as originally given in the text, but we're doing some variation of it, which I'll talk about. So don't try to look at the back of the book for the answers. It's not gonna be the same thing because I'm changing the assignment, so to speak. Okay, the topic is cylinders and quadric surfaces. Now we were to do exactly what the text has us to do. We would be drawing, I mean, they're neat pictures, nice pictures, but I'm not interested in, you know, artwork, so to speak. I mean, I'm not against art, obviously, but, you know, I'm not going to judge you on your ability or inability to draw. But you can see nice pictures like this, this, this. There's an ellipsoid. It's the three-dimensional version of an ellipse, okay? And that was on page 834, 835. And some more neat pictures, 836. And don't worry about all these funny names. I mean, you can look it up or not. Instead, what we're gonna do is trace through the traces in a plane. And you can see we're comfortable with two dimensions, Y versus Z or X versus Z or X versus Y. Okay, And we will just be able to trace in two dimensions. And here's a nice picture here, figure eight. It's sort of a saddle that the origin there is called a saddle point. It's because it's a maximum in one direction and a minimum in the other. We'll talk more about that another time. But for instance, this point here is a saddle point. If you look this away, then it looks like this is a minimum. But if you turn 90 degrees and you look over here, you can see that outline there, that's gonna be a maximum if I go this way. So a saddle point is both a maximum and a minimum depending on how you look at it. Okay, and here's some other nice Pictures in 3D on page 837, just to show you what they are. Uh, this is an ellipsoid, three-dimensional version of an ellipse, something called an elliptic paraboloid. So you could see a parabola or an ellipse, depending on how you slice, so to speak. The saddle is technically called a hyperbolic paraboloid. Okay, here's a cone. And one of the definitions of cone is not what you and I normally think of as a cone, like an ice cream cone but it goes forever, both up and down. Um, so that is another definition of a cone. There's nothing wrong with the previous definition, but one definition of a mathematical cone is, imagine that good cone, it just keeps going up, 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 and down, 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 down. Hyperboloid of one sheet, hyperboloid of two sheets, and the of corresponding equations. Don't worry too much about the names, okay? So what are we gonna do? We're just gonna take traces, on the coordinate planes. And yeah, here's a hyperboloid of two sheets. This looks like a paraboloid, depending on how you cut. Looks like if you cut this away, you see a circle. I see a circle here. If you look this way, there's a parabola. And if you look this way, it may also be a parabola, All right? So that's what we got. Now for the homework, I'll just show it to you. So again, don't look at the back of the book for any of this, we're doing 11 and 20. So it actually doesn't matter if I assign an even or not, none of the answers in the back of the book. Okay, use traces to sketch and identify the surface. We're just gonna trace in the coordinate planes, x equals zero, y equals zero, and z equals zero according to the homework. And what does that mean? Okay, so uh, traces in the x, y, y, z, and x, z planes. Okay. And for this video, I'm not only doing 12.6, I was gonna go back and clean up some other stuff from 12.5 and some previous sections in preparation for the test or exam. Okay, so going back to 12.5, let me just finish some other stuff here. Okay, you're given two lines, looks like they're giving you symmetric equations. This is T and this is S, and they're asking you, um, do they intersect uh, parallel or skew? <clears throat> so I, Solve for x, x is t plus two, y is negative two plus three, and z is negative three plus one. And for L2, x is s plus three, y is three s minus four, z is negative seven s plus two. So line one, line two. So the vector, the direction vector v1 is one, negative two, negative three, which are just the coefficients of t, one, negative two, and negative three. And V2 is 1, 3, negative 7, the coefficients of S, 1, 3, negative 7. 
Okay, so they are not scalar multiples of each other. You can't multiply this one by something to get that. So they're not parallel. Okay, now to determine skew or intersecting, X has to match, Y has to match, Z has to match. <clears throat> In other words, T plus two equals S plus three, which means a little bit of algebra, T is S plus one. Also negative two plus three is equal to three S minus four. And also negative three T plus one has to be negative seven S plus two. So we try to solve. Okay, so I plugged in Y is negative two S plus one, that's T, right? Plus three, a little bit of algebra. I get negative two S plus one is Y. And from the other equation, Y is also three S minus four. So two equations, two unknowns, a little bit of algebra. Set negative two S plus one equal to three S minus four. This comes out to be five equals five S, S equals one. And if I plug back in, that means T is two. So is that consistent with all three of them? And the answer is yes. Okay. If X is T plus two and also S plus three, if I plug in S is one and T is two, I do get X is equal to four. Likewise, Y is equal to that and that. If I plug in T is two and S is one, for both of them, I get negative one. And likewise for Z, which is negative three T plus one, and also negative seven S plus two. If I plug in one and two, I get negative five. So I do have a consistent set of uh, equations. So the point at which they intersect is four, negative one, negative five. So these two lines intersect in space. <clears throat> okay, then I'm just gonna show you 12.559 also, where they give you these two equations. Okay, so uh, we're trying to come up with uh, parametric and symmetric equations of the line of intersection. So here are two planes that intersect. So the intersection of two planes would normally be a line. So if I you can imagine folding this into two planes that they would touch at a line. So come up with parametric and symmetric equations for the line. So I just find two points, find two points of intersection. I arbitrarily set Z equal to zero, which means five X minus two Y is one, four X plus Y is six. Multiply the second equation by two. Gives me this. I messed up the first time. Uh, add them up, I get 13, x equals 13, x is one. And plug back in, I get y equals two. So one, two, zero. Okay, then I arbitrarily set y equal to one, which means five x minus two z is one. Four x plus z equals six. Multiply the second equation by two. Five x minus two z equals one. 8x plus 2z is 12. Again, I get 13x equals 13, x is one, which means z is two. So the other point is one, zero, two. So I found two points, which are on both, both planes, one, two, zero, and one, zero, two. Okay, so I'll start at one, two, zero, and then take a scalar multiple t of delta x, delta y, delta z. <coughs> delta x is zero, I'm going from one to one. Delta Y is negative two, I'm going from two to zero. And Delta Z is two, I'm going from zero to two. So X is one plus zero T or just one. <coughs> y is two minus two T, Z is two T. Symmetric equations, X is one, solve for T. Y minus two over negative two and equals Z over two. Okay. <coughs> okay, now for 12.6 stuff, palm 13 x squared equals four y squared plus z squared. Okay, give the traces in the coordinate planes. <clears throat> so the yz plane means x equals zero, the xz plane means y equals zero, and the xy plane is z equals zero. Now what's the convention? If z is involved, let's always have z going up. I mean, that's the way it is um, when we uh, have x, y, and z, right? x, y, and z, z is up. Okay, so if the letter z is involved, it's always up. So Y, Z, X, Z. And then the only other combination is what do I do for X and Y? Well, what have we always been doing for X and Y? X is horizontal and Y is vertical. So all you do is you plug in X equals zero, put a zero there, <clears throat> and you have the equation four Y squared plus Z squared equals zero. Well, the only point that works is zero, zero, the origin, right? This is non-negative. This is non-negative. If I add them up, I'll get non-negative. I'm getting a positive unless they're both zero. So the graph is just the origin, zero, zero. Okay, and the X, Z plane, which means Y equals zero, plug in Y equals zero, I get X squared equals Z squared, which means Z is plus or minus X, which are lines with slope of one and negative one in the X, Z plane. 
and then z equals zero, put a zero there, x squared equals four y squared, whoops, which means y squared equals x squared over four. So y is plus or minus half x. So slope of one half and negative a half. <clears throat> Here's 15, nine y squared plus four z squared equals x squared minus 36. <clears throat> I plug in x is zero, nine y squared plus four y squared equals 36. That's an ellipse, divide by 36. Y squared over four plus z squared over nine equals one, y and z. So now your brain kind of gets mixed up. You have to pretend that's like x and that's like y. So x squared over four means I go two left and right. I know you're used to y being up and down, but now in the y, z plane, z is reserved for up, so y is horizontal. So two left and right, three up and down. So that's the trace in the x equals zero plane or the y, z plane. And y equals zero, put a zero here. So I have four z squared equals x squared plus 36. Subtract x squared, divide by 36. z squared over nine minus x squared over 36 equals one. That's a hyperbola, which goes up and down. Z is the way Y used to be. So it goes like so crudely. Finally, Z equals zero. Plug in Z equals zero. So I have nine Y squared equals X squared plus 36. Subtract X squared, divide by 36. Y squared over four minus X squared over 36 equals one, which looks pretty much similar to that. It goes up and down. So it looks generally something like so. And then problem 12, four X squared plus nine Y squared plus nine Z squared equals 36. The Y Z plane means X equals zero. Nine Y squared plus nine Z squared is 36 divided by nine. Y squared plus Z squared equals four is a circle center of the origin and radius of two. Y Z, Z always goes up. Y equals zero means the X Z plane, you might recall. So plug that in there, 4x squared plus 9y squared equals 36, divide by 36. x squared over 9 plus z squared over 4 equals 1 is an ellipse. So 3 left and right, 2 up and down, goes like so. Then plug in z equals 0, put a 0 there. 4x squared plus 9y squared equals 36, divide by 36. <clears throat> x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So it pretty much looks the same thing. So 3 left and right, 2 up and down in the xy plane looks like that. 14, z squared minus 4x squared minus 4y squared equals four. So plug in x equals zero for the y, z plane. z squared minus y squared equals four, divide by four. z squared over four minus y squared over four equals one. Okay, so it's gonna be vertical. So the box, I go two left, right, up and down, draw my box, draw the asymptote you might recall, and it goes up. So it goes up and down like so. Y equals zero, Z squared minus four X squared equals four, divide by four, Z squared over four minus X squared over one equals one. <clears throat> so it still is going vertically, uh, two units up and down, one unit left and right. Here's my box, draw the diagonals and goes up and down like so. Z equals zero, I messed up here, negative four X squared minus Y squared equals four, uh, if I multiply both sides by negative one, it might be easier to see. Four X squared plus Y squared equals negative four. That can't happen. So there's no graph. Impossible, empty set, right? Non-negative plus non-negative cannot equal negative four. Okay, problem 16 looks like this. <clears throat> X equals zero means Y equals negative three Y, three Z squared. So mentally you have to think of that as like X equals negative three Y squared, what we're used to in the Y Z plane. That's a part of the opening left. Y equals zero. Three X squared plus three Z squared equals zero. Divide by three X squared plus Z squared equals zero. All you have is the origin. And then Z equals zero. Three X squared plus Y equals zero. Y equals negative three X squared. I recognize that as a parabola, which opens down. Okay, <clears throat> 18, X equals zero. Y, Z plane, negative Y squared plus three Z squared equals zero. Y squared equals three Z squared. Square root property, Y is plus or minus radical three Z, or Z is plus or minus one over radical three Y. That's about 0.577. So slope of positive and negative 0.577 going through the origin in the Y, Z plane. Y equals zero. Three X squared plus three Z squared equals zero. 
x squared plus z squared equals zero, all you have is the origin in the xz plane. z equals zero, three x squared minus y squared equals zero. That means y squared equals three x squared. Squared property y is plus or minus radical three x, slope of radical three and negative radical three through the origin. <clears throat> and 20 was the last one I was gonna show you. X equals y squared minus z squared. X equals zero, yet y squared is z squared. Y is plus or minus z or z is plus or minus y, slope of one, negative one in the yz plane. Y equals zero, x equals negative z squared. So I think x equals negative y squared, that's a parabola opening to the left. And then z equals zero, I get x equals y squared, parabola opening to the right. <clears throat> Again, one other thing I wanted to emphasize, r is a position vector. Remember, r is a position vector which emanates from the origin. So r is x, y, z. If r is x, y, z, you end up at the point x, y, z in parentheses. Okay, so that's the section. Um, while I'm at it, let me go back and fill in some other details in preparation for the test. 12.227, you have the vector i plus radical 3j. <clears throat> All right, so one radical three, a little bit of Pythagorean theorem, this is two. So cosine of theta is a half, which means theta is 60 degrees. So the angle of elevation is 60 degrees. Number three, the point given was two, 2.4, 3.5, and parallel to 3i plus 2j minus k, which means the position vector, or the direction vector is three, two, negative one. So using the formula r is r0 plus tv, you can put this on your cheat sheet. So r0 is two, 2.4, 3.5. Notice it's the same as this, only this is a vector that should be more angle braces. Sorry about that. Plus a scalar multiple t of three, two, negative one, the direction vector. Okay, so that's two plus three t, 2.4 plus two t, 3.5 minus t. So the parametric equations are x equals two plus three t, y equals 2.4 plus two t, z is 3.5 minus t. For the symmetric equation, just solve for t. So t is x minus two over three, which is also what? Y minus 2.4 divided by two, which is also Z minus 3.5 divided by negative one. So there we go. Uh, 31, you're given the points 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 1, 0. Let me call them P, Q, and R. <clears throat> First, I formed a vector P, Q, which is delta X, delta Y, delta Z. So from P to Q, delta X is one, delta Y is negative one, delta Z is zero. P to R from zero to one, delta X is one. From one to one, delta Y is zero. And from one to zero, delta Z is negative one. Take the cross product, I, J, K, one, negative one, zero. One, zero, should be negative one, sorry. Okay, which is I times, um, negative one, minus J times one, plus k times one, okay? So negative one, negative one, one is a normal vector, okay? So by formula, the equation of the plane is negative one times x minus zero minus one times y minus one plus one times z minus one. Clean it up, negative x minus y plus z is zero or x plus y minus z equals zero. 12.3 number 11, you might recall, uh, you're given that you have a unit vector, u, v, and uh, what's the angle between certain things? So u dot v is norm u, norm v, cosine of 60 degrees, but the norm of u and v is one. Cosine of 60 is a half, so that's one half. However, u dot w, you have to move u down here because to do the dot product, the two vectors have to originate from the same point. So that makes the angle between them 120 degrees. So this is 120 degrees. So u dot w is norm u, norm w, cosine 120, one times one times negative half, so that's where the answer is, negative half, right? Okay, and just a setup for 12.325, P, Q, and R given. So <clears throat> first you want the vector P, Q, from P to Q, delta X is one, delta Y is three, and delta Z is negative six. P, R is five, negative one, negative seven. Okay, and then you use a cross product. Okay, so PQ cross PR is, uh, sorry, PQ dot PR 
is five minus three plus 42. It's not equal to zero. Do the same thing to find QP and QR and so on. So that's just a setup that you would do for problem 12.3. All right, so that was 12.6 and a little bit of a couple other sections.